Welcome again to Rouge Radio. I'm Reed Duffy, and it's a pleasure to be joined by the former coach of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Mike Kelly. Mike, pleasure to have you on the line. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me on. And now, I know that uh, you actually reached out to Rouge Radio to come on to the air, and uh, we're very happy to have you on the show. And you want to talk about the legal troubles that uh, sort of befell you, and I want to give you the opportunity right off the top as an open forum to go ahead and clear up anything that's out there, any of the rumors and and the other uh, BS, shall we say, that, that's out there and that has uh, sullied your name, sir, and just go ahead and, and, and take off with it. Well, I, you know, I, I appreciate the opportunity here, and, and uh, I got connected with Rouge Radio through Facebook, and, and I never thought that I actually would be a, a Facebooker, but um, it, it's something I've actually been forced to do because there's uh, – uh, so much negative stuff that's out there, uh, you know, on the internet right now that, uh, quite frankly, um, should have never been released. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm sure everyone is aware that, uh, uh, you know, that I ran into some uh, legal difficulties, um, but those were all expunged um, in the, the state of Pennsylvania. If you do a, a legal search on me right now, you will find nothing. Um, because uh, all the accusations were absolutely false. Um, the, uh, the accuser uh, entered my home um, unannounced and unbeknownst to me as I was in uh, an upstairs uh, uh, bedroom and um, uh, proceeded to ransack my house. And, and I am the one that called 911 and, and asked, please get this woman out of my home i don't want to press any charges just get her out of here uh but in the state of pennsylvania with any type of domestic dispute um they have to file paperwork and uh and the man will, will be taken in but i was never read miranda rights um as being officially arrested it was just a matter of paperwork and the only way that it was ever released um you know, to the to the media was because the uh, the woman involved was the one that called um, up to the Winnipeg media, and then the Winnipeg media ran with it like wildfire. Um, but I was told by the police at that time that uh, um, nothing would ever be released. Um, but of course, when they are um, directly asked, it is public record, and they had to do that. But uh, uh, as a matter of fact, it was the police officer that came to my home to tell me that uh, the Winnipeg media had gotten a hold of it. But um, I never paid any. I didn't have to. No bail was ever asked of me. Um, I was released on my own recognizance. There's people out there that that uh, you know believe that I had to go through a um, anger management program, which is a, a 35 class um, procedure. I didn't have to do any of that. Um, did I go and, and talk with somebody about my situation? I absolutely did. And um, uh, maybe six to eight visits, and they found that I was more sad than I was mad because I had just lost the job that uh, I truly coveted. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, I just I just wanted everyone to know that I, <laughs> I was, uh, I don't want to say I was a victim, but... Uh, it, it, the way it worked out in the legal system and the, and the, the truth um, was presented, and I've been expunged and was never, uh, you know, like I said, never officially arrested with Miranda rights and um, uh, never had to post bail. So uh, a lot of the stuff that's out there is, is just um, a fabrication and uh, something that um, uh, got its own wings and, and flew and, and – uh, uh, I, I apologize to everyone that's been supporters of me that, um, that they had to go through this because uh, at times I think it's been more difficult on my inner circle than it has been on me um, because I, I, I believe that I'll be back and I'll be better for all this in the long run. Well, Mike, uh, and that, that's, a, that's a real admirable, admirable um, stance to take on this situation because from this story it really does sound like you were, were, were victimized and pretty badly at that. I mean, to, to, to sum it up, essentially, somebody broke into your home, and uh, even if they weren't robbing, at the very least ransacking your home, and in the end of this, you become the villain. I mean, that is, that is an absolute victimizing situation that cost you a CFL coaching job. And, and again, we thank you for coming on and, and just explaining that to our listeners, because that, that is a really bad situation that you never should have been caught up in. And, and very unfortunate for someone who, who has an excellent history in football 
to be taken away from the game because of something like that. Well, you know, it was uh, the ironic thing of all of it was I was up. Um, uh, it was in my townhouse in, in Philadelphia. Um, I was up uh, in my bedroom, of a floor above, and I was actually on the conference call uh, addressing the entire Blue Bomber organization as Lyle Bauer was announcing his resignation. And um, when the young woman came into the home, uh, she went through the entire low, lower level. I didn't even have any idea that she was there. And then she came into the room, and uh, the first right hand I took to the left side of my face um, was why I was on that conference call. And wow. uh, so it, it's just good to know that I can still take a punch. But uh, I took about <laughs> thirty, took about thirty of them, and. Uh, um, you know, that was one of the things that, uh, you know, my, I, I used the same attorney that Andy Reid had used uh, when his sons ran into a few problems. And, uh, um, you know, they, they, uh, they took pictures of my face. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I, uh, I, I look like I just uh, spent a little bit of time with Joe Frazier. So, uh, but it, it'll, you know, it, it'll all, it, at some point it'll all go away. Um, uh, but I just, uh, you know, there's just so many uh, things out there um, that paint me as a villain. And anybody that knows me, um, you know, and then has been in my inner circle and spent any time with me know that, that I wouldn't have been involved in anything like that. No, and, and it, it was very hard to believe for someone who, who's been around the game for so long, who's been such a positive influence in the game of football, for them to turn around and be a villain like that. It, it's extremely hard to believe it. And from your story, clearly you are not the villain, are not the villain by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, I definitely want to turn the attention away uh, from that situation and talk about what would have happened had you stayed on in Winnipeg, because obviously uh, it was a tough road in Winnipeg. The team was going through a, a, a rebuilding process, and I, I just sort of want to get into your head a little bit as to what you would have done uh, furthering on down the road with the Blue Bombers. 